Hello friends, welcome back. Hope you're doing well and happy new year. Welcome back to the channel. The uh, The holidays flew by. I have not sat down here and recorded a video in about a month. Ended up taking quite a bit longer break than I intended to, but I'm rested, ready to get back to it and to jump into some things that I want to do on this channel in 2025. Uh, this video, I'm going to be in Luminar Neo and I'm going to be talking about essentially two things. One is something that you have to do on every photo and the other one is how do you go about doing that? And so that's uh, really all about being intentional with your edits, with it, which I think is a really huge deal, and will end up uh, giving you results that are going to be better than if you're not intentional with your edits. Now, I've been writing about some things on the blog during the holidays. I haven't had any time to record videos, but I recorded, or excuse me, I, I wrote a couple of things on the blog. One is some ideas to help you get better photos in 2025, link down below. And the other one is just really a quick summary of my 2024 and what my plans are for 2025. Also linked down below. Let's jump into this video. I've got this photo here, which started life like that. This was taken on the Luminar Adventure in Madeira in May of last year. A dark photo. I've already done some things here in Develop, as you can see. And for me, my approach these days is really, when I have a dark photo like this, I start by experimenting with lifting the shadows as opposed to lifting the exposure. And that's simply because um, it's obviously dark everywhere, but there's enough brightness along the horizon where the sun is rising that I don't want to lift the exposure there. So I feel like lifting shadows is a better approach. Pulling down the highlights slightly and adjusting contrast works better for me than just lifting the exposure, which is just a blanket increase across the entire photo. I didn't want that. The other thing that I did is also add some warmth because it was quite a bit cooler, but that's got me in pretty good shape to get started. And now that I've done that, if you've been here before, you know my second tool is Super Contrast. Okay, and here's the photo before I made those edits in Super Contrast, and here it is after. It's honestly not a massive difference, but I love this as a one-two punch for editing in Luminar because it really gives you so much control over the light. And of course, the light is what we're all about, and that's primarily what we're focused on in most of the edit. Now, there's color and there's detail. Those are critically important. But if you don't get the light right, I think your whole photo edit gets off uh, kind of kilter, so to speak. Speaking of which, if you sub to my newsletter, which is also a link down below, I've got a 27-page Luminar Neo ebook that helps you as an editing guide, walking through lots of different tips, tricks, ideas, and insights to help you make better photos. And uh, one of the things I cover is, of course, going from developer auto super contrast because I think it's critically important before and current state. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is jump into Structure AI, one of my favorite tools. And what I want to do is add a little bit of crunch to that foreground. And that's where a mask comes into play. And masking is a critical, critical, in fact, the, I would say, most critical skill in photo editing. And I'm going to use it a lot in this video because I use it in every photo. And I find myself using it more and more than I ever did in the past. I've used masking a lot. Uh, in my uh, editing for years, but now I find that I do it even more than I used to. And that's just because I'm getting really intentional with my edits and getting really targeted with what I want to do. This structure AI applies to the foreground and I fade it into just the edge of the coastline. So before and after adds a little bit of crunch. And I think that you would see more of that when it's closer to you. That's why I fade it with that gradient edge into the distance. Uh, but it also adds a little bit of brightening, which is helping uh, with the foreground as well, again, before and after. I mentioned at the beginning of the video that there's really two themes or two things I'm talking about in this video, and that is that there's uh, one thing that you have to kind of do, and there's one way to go about doing it. The thing you have to do, or the secret, if you will, of really getting a really crisp and beautiful final result is that you've got to be intentional. I've already mentioned that, but it's, I think, critical or key in your edits. You have to be really intentional with what you're doing, which is essentially have a plan. Don't just aimlessly move sliders. So you have to have a plan and be intentional with it. And the way you do it, the way you go about doing that is with masking. And that's why I use masking so much, because it really does get you sort of from start to finish, uh, or at least over the finish line in terms of adjusting your edit. Now, light is a huge deal, and my favorite masking tool in any product, and also in Luminar, of course, is luminosity masking. I just love it because what it does is it isolates uh, light based on, or excuse me, it isolates a mask based on kind of tonal areas. And in this case, I'm focused on the lighter tonal areas, which are, of course, kind of the highlights, but I'm also fading it into some of the other areas kind of near the highlights. And so the sky is essentially covered. A little bit of the edge of the water is covered. A little bit of the tops of the rocks are covered. And I think that it's all good and all fine. And I'm just kind of refining this a little bit as I'm kind of playing around. I think something about like that is going to be perfect. Now, this is adjustment 
for a specific light area, which is the brighter parts of the photo, but I'm actually not adjusting the light levels. I'm actually going to adjust the temperature. And that's because I'm being very intentional. And what I want to do is warm up this sunrise and create a little bit kind of a nicer color pop overall. So something about like that being added to that area really gives it a nice kick of warmth. So if you look at the before, quite a bit more blue. And after, you're really starting to get some of that warmth. And what I like about the luminosity mask is it's isolated some of the tops of these rocks so they're a little bit lighter. So it's picking up some of that warmth, which I think just looks fantastic. And now that I'm sitting here looking at it, I see some spots in my photo. I'm gonna go ahead and jump into a race and let that erase it for me. And then we'll jump back into the rest of the edit. I love that uh, automatic dust spot removal. It is, it's a game changer and it's a lifesaver, frankly, because I have so many photos that I edited in the past and then I look at it later and zoom in and I'm like, oh gosh, I missed a spot. This feels like most of the time it gets just about every spot, which I'm super happy about. Uh, I'm gonna move into a kind of a color grade. And for me, that's Color Harmony, one of the best tools in any product, anywhere. Uh, and I absolutely love it. And in this case, I'm gonna do probably a little bit more than I normally recommend doing, which is I'm using three of the tools here because uh, it has a huge impact on the overall warmth of the photo. And I'm trying to create that warmer overall kind of glow, if you will, that's happening with this sunrise. And so I'm just making these adjustments here and I'll talk about these here as I do them. Brilliance and warmth, uh, all of this applies globally, by the way. There are times when I mask color harmony, but usually for me, it's a color grade, which means I'm tying together the overall look and feel of the photo and I'm using the color to do that. So the color grade most often gets applied uh, globally. I added some warmth and some coolness here in split color warmth, which by adding the warmth, dragging the warm slider to the right, the warm stuff gets warmer. And by dragging the cool slider to the left, the cool stuff gets cooler. So it's a little bit of that counterbalance of the, um, the play of warm and cool, kind of that tug of war. Uh, now in shadows here in color balance, which I love, I'm gonna add a little bit of warmth and a little bit of yellow here. And then I'm gonna go into the midtones and I'm gonna add a little bit of warmth there. So a little bit of red, so like a three. I'm going very light on these adjustments because overall, as you can see, I'm getting quite a bit of color already. Um, I do go a little bit higher in the uh, highlights and that's gonna hit more of that sky, but I've got a beautiful, nice warm photo. So before Color Harmony and after really just, I think beautiful color look overall, I'm super happy with how this is turning out. Now, speaking of being intentional and controlling your edits, I want to go in and my next move is really focused just on that sun. Um, I tried to catch it coming through here. It wasn't exactly uh, lined up perfectly and I could have moved, but I liked where I was. And so one of the things I like to do is go in and get a radial gradient. And I'm just going to put that right there. And what I want to do is just create a little bit of glow something about like that, just a really small area. I'm not trying to create some fake starburst. There's nothing wrong with that. There's a tool in Luminar that will do that for you, and I use it sometimes. But in this case, all I want to do is just add a little bit of glow there. So I'm doing like a 1.88, let's say. Uh, and then I'm going to warm it up as well, so add some temperature to it, so like a 20-something. And all I'm doing is creating a little bit of glow of that sun coming through those rocks. So if you look at it before, not really happening, just a tiny bit, and after, now it's doing it a bit more. If I zoom in, you can probably see it better. Let me do that. So before with the sun and after, it just gives it a nice little glow. And I like that look. And so again, that's just being intentional. And for me, being intentional is really about slowing down. And I do futz around, play around, mess around, whatever word you like. But I play around with a lot of different sliders before I kind of lock in on an edit. And sometimes I'll do something that kind of goes against what I did earlier. There's no linear path in my editing, and I think most people are probably this way, where you, it's kind of free-flowing, kind of fluid, uh, and um, that doesn't mean you're not intentional. You play around, and then you get intentional once you figure out what works, but sometimes you have to play around before you kind of know what works, and that's one of the ways I like to do it, is just experimenting with different tools. Now, a great tool to experiment with to help you get a direction in your photo is Accent AI. And I've mentioned this before, sometimes at the beginning of an edit, I'll come in and take Accent AI and just go to 100 because it'll do a lot to a photo. That's way too much and I don't recommend doing that. Plus, that's on top of all the edits I've already done. But sometimes I'll come in and use Accent AI to 100 just to get a good look at the photo and say, oh, I kind of like that or that or you know certain aspects of it. I don't want it all and I don't want it at 100, but it gives me an idea and it launches me uh, or helps me launch 
uh, what path I'm going down. In this case, I'm going to come in with a radial gradient. And for Accent AI, I just want to pop that center of the photo a bit. So I'm going to do something about like that and stretch it out a little bit and maybe make it a little bit broader and maybe a little bit wider, maybe a little bit more gradient, something about like that. All I'm trying to do is just create a little extra oomph in the center of the photo. And I'm going to go ahead and bump this to about a 25 or 30, just kind of focusing the attention on the center. You're kind of drawn there visually anyway, but I think this really helps a little bit, give it a little bit more pop. And that's what I love about using masks with Accent AI. It's just a perfect complement to that tool because this tool does so much and having a mask helps you kind of control it and keep it from going over the top. So before and after a nice little pop in the center, which I also think kind of aligns with the glow of the sun kind of coming through and that sort of thing. So I think that all helps. And speaking of the glow of the sun coming through, I want to pop some of these rocks. So I'm going to go back to develop. I'm going to go to object select and I'm going to grab some of these rocks and I want to just add a little bit of oomph to them with a little bit of a light increase. So you'll notice I try to get this rock and it grabbed that entire foreground. So it's not always exactly perfect, but it does often get you pretty close with a lot of these rocks or a lot of uh, whatever objects you may be grabbing in your foreground. So I think something about like that, and what I want to do is go in, I'm just going to increase that exposure about a half a stop. All I want to do is just create a little bit more focus on some of those rocks in the foreground. So if you look at the before and the after, they're a little bit brighter, maybe a little bit too much. And, you know, I'm a little bit undecided about these rocks over here on the side. Uh, bottom line, experiment. Every photo is different. I kind of like it, but I want to keep in, uh, in aligned with the theme of that light kind of coming through and hitting it. So I might need to erase those. Uh, speaking of erase, the other thing is that this rock, I'm kind of seeing the back of that rock. And the sunlight is not going to be hitting the back of the rock because, of course, it's impossible for that to happen. So I'm going to go into Erase in the brush. Click Erase, and at a pretty high strength, I'm going to come in here and just erase that uh, masking from the back of this rock. So it's going to be something more like that, where it's just kind of hitting the top of that rock uh, as opposed to the entire rock, including the back. So now, if you look at just that rock before and after, and I think while I'm at it, I think I will just erase these rocks uh, or at least reduce that. I'm at 70% strength, so it's coming off pretty heavily but not entirely. So before and after, a little bit of focus on those areas. And again, I'm going to pull that down just a little bit more before and after. The other thing you could do is add a little bit of warmth. I don't think I want to do it here, but think about that when you're editing. If you're lightening little things like that and you're bringing sunlight onto them by, by lightening them, which is essentially what you're doing, you may want to consider adding some warmth to it. I don't think I need to here. I don't want it to be overdone, but it's something to think about when you're editing. And now that I've done that, I'm just going to wrap this up with a vignette, which is up here. I moved it to favorites and I forgot because it's usually down here. So I'm going to just drop this to about a negative 40 some odd and size, you know, mid 20s as well. And then I'm going to, I think my subject in the center is fine. I don't think I really need to choose a subject, uh, but I am going to drag inner light up a little bit. So I think maybe about a 20. That kind of complements what I did with Accent AI. So vignette before and after, and of course I need feathering, and I kind of like roundness. That's just a personal uh, preference. I think feathering high is always really good. So before and after that feathering will help it kind of fade into the edges. And this is also being intentional with the light because all you're doing with a vignette, especially with inner light, is you're, you're kind of basically creating two radial masks, a dark one around the edge and a bright one in the center by using inner light. So that's essentially what you're doing. So again, you're controlling the light and being intentional and getting a little bit more focus on your subject, which for me is really down the center, the light coming through those rocks and that sort of thing. But that's what I'm talking about in this video. Hope it gives you some ideas. It's really, again, about you know the thing that you have to do and the way to do it. The thing you have to do is, of course, be intentional and focus on what it is you need to do tool-wise in order to accomplish whatever vision you have for the photo. And the way to do it is masking. It's not hard. It's uh, incredibly powerful and useful. It takes a little practice, but experiment, have fun. You can't go wrong. You're not going to mess anything up. And frankly, it's just a lot of fun to do it. So that's my first video of 2025. Hope you got something out of this. Be sure to check out my newsletter down below where you get tips like this sent to your email. You also get that 27-page ebook about Luminar Neo, which will help you with your editing. Thanks for watching, my friends. I'll be back uh, soon with another video. You guys take care. And until next time, and Happy New Year, adios.